Good morning. Welcome to St. James. Does this sound very loud to you folks? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Is that better? Is it, can you hear this? Does it sound better? Come on, Dolores. It's been a long day. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you from the internet world for being here. Uh, being with us when we verified we're live, streaming live. We were. Uh, there were two views. <laughs> I think it was me and Mandy. <laughs> but it can only go up from there, right? So thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence. Um, this morning, if you've not been with us for outdoor worship, uh, we have a couple of, uh, of requests. Uh, respect the safe distancing. When we sing, we'll have one hymn that we sing uh, that follows the, the sermon. And hum to yourself, sing softly. Uh, don't take off masks and start singing loudly. Uh, that will help things go upwind. <laughs> Sorry, or downwind, yeah. Um, and then for communion, communion is on this table. It's in a small plastic ramekin and there's bread in there. There's already wine. Uh, dripped on the bread, uh, and so I would invite you to come. Uh, if there's more than one person in your party, please just one person come forward, get one for each of you, and then take it back to your seat. And there's also some bread with grape juice as well. And then if, um, once everybody has uh, their communion, bread and wine together, we'll commune together at that point, and then you, we'll just take that, uh, take that ramekin home with you and dispose of it. There are, just as a quick reminder for a few other uh, announcements that may or may not be on the bulletin sheet. Um, for those of you on the internet, feel free to contact us if you have questions or uh, suggestions. If you'd like to talk to me or other folks, just give us a call or a text or email. We'd be glad to speak with you and know that you're a part of our congregation this day. Uh, the appeal for outdoor ministries continues with Novus Way, that's Luther Rock, Luther Ridge, Luther Ranch, and Luther Springs, and also with Camp Agape Curie Beach. Uh, monies to help assist them bridge this time until next summer's uh, full camping schedule begins. If you uh, desire communion at home, you can't be with us today by internet, then uh, Feel free to give me a call or a text, and we can arrange a safe way to do that, I think. That's uh, similar to what we're doing here with, uh, with the ramekin and the bread and wine already there. Also, on, the, on your sheet, there should be a list of the meetings that are already scheduled this week by Zoom. And uh, on the screen, you'll see them as, there as well. If they go fast, too fast, uh, check the, uh, our website. If you don't know how to do Zoom, and you have a computer or an iPhone or an Android phone, give us a call so you can do it. Uh, if for no other reason than to sit around on a Tuesday evening for an hour with a bunch of crazy Lutherans and laugh at each other and hear some corny jokes and just take a time to laugh. We don't do that enough. Eight months ago we didn't do it enough, and today we really need that time to change our brain waves to, to do something different. Again, thanks for being here as we gather ourselves together in worship. We will begin with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. I invite you to stand as you are able or so desire. I know you may be bundled up, and if that's the case and don't want to stand, that's cool. We come before God offering our words of confession. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems, creates, and sustains all of creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain that resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this is one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of Matthew in the 21st chapter. This is from Eugene Peterson's message, version, and translation. Jesus is still gathered with the Pharisees and scribes and the elders of the church, and he's offering them this story. Here's another story, Jesus says. Listen closely. There was once a man, a wealthy farmer, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put up a watchtower, then turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect the profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him up. The next servant they murdered. They threw stones at the third, but he got away. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They all got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his rope. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they will respect my son. But when the farmhands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands in greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all for ourselves. They grabbed him, threw him out, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrives home from his trip, what do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them, a rotten bunch, a good riddance. The scribes and Pharisees answered. 
Then he'll assign the vineyard to farmhands who will hand over the profits when it's time. Jesus said, right. And you can read it for yourselves in your Bible. The stone the masons threw out is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes, we can hardly believe it. Jesus continues, this is the way it is with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to a people who will live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on this stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on gets smashed. When the religious leaders heard this story, they knew it was about them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail. But intimidated by public opinion, they held back. Most people held Jesus to be a prophet of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The events of this week, uh, I, I was fully prepared. Well, I wasn't fully prepared. Let's, let's be realistic. Uh, I was planning to use the Matthew text for a sermon today. But the events of the week, uh, something happened on Tuesday evening. Many of us may know what a debate is, and many of us may know what happened Tuesday evening. In my mind, they're not the same thing. Um, and others of us will also, we will know, uh, President Trump and, his, and Mrs. Trump are suffering with COVID at the moment, along with a number of other federal government leaders along with folks that we know and, and love ourselves in this community, in our families. So the Philippians text jumped out at me for a moment. So that's where we're headed. So just going through some things around the house, found one of these. Let's see here. Then I'm, I'm looking through other things in my file drawer and I find one of, one of these. First place high school debate. Ha! Third best individual debater. Not bad for a small little 300 person school. third place in some event that I don't even remember. This is one that I particularly am fond of and most proud of. It says that on a day in May 1977 that the Chancellor of the, Uni of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill said, I have successfully completed the, nece the, the necessary requirements for graduation for that esteemed, <coughs> esteemed <laughs> university. Some of you appreciate what I just did, don't you? You've been wanting to do that for years. I know your sister has. Hmm. I think this one qualifies as well. It says that Bishop Leonard Bolick and others laid hands on me. It says I was ordained in the church to preach, teach, distribute, and oversee the sacraments. What we have been proclaimed to be, according to Paul, doesn't matter. You can hear all kinds of stories. Just had to stand in line at the checkout counters, right? And there's magazines and all sorts of stuff about who people are and what their background is and how 
all of that pedigree or their DNA or whatever makes them better than anybody else. Or if they're struggling in something, then we have to feel excessively sorry for them because they do have that DNA and that pedigree. When it all comes down to it, Paul talks so brilliantly. I mean, Paul, Paul had all of the medals. If he was a Boy Scout, he'd have 30 merit badges, he'd have Eagle, and he'd have it all by the time he was age 13. If he's a Girl Scout, he'd been Gold Star by the time he was 14. Yeah, if he was a stock car racer, he had already won uh, you know, the Indianapolis 500 and Charlotte Motor Speedway on the same day, and he'd done it three years in a row. He was the best at everything. He had every needed pedigree to be successful in the world. It wasn't enough for him. But it all came down to it. When he had an encounter with a living God on the road to Damascus, and that person that he saw said, look here, Paul, you see this? You see this? You see this? You've been persecuting me, Paul. Why? And so Paul's life changes, and all the things that he thought he was, he says is rubbish. That's a kind, nice word that we have to use in public. But the real trans, we got small kids? Okay. The real, Nate, cover your ears. Uh, the, the real meaning of that word is the thing that I helped my granddaughter do in the bathroom earlier this morning. You get my drift? That's what Paul really says. It really is worthless. None of his pedigree matters. None of it. And when he writes this letter to the Philippians, they are in the city of Philippi, which is on the Aegean coast. It's on the uh, Via Ignatia, which is a road that, big transportation road, a lot of goods and services and products flow back and forth from Rome to the eastern part of the empire. It's important. And so these people there have been made to be important because when Rome set this place up and came in and redeveloped it and made it much more than it was, then they became important. And he wants to make sure that this first place that he started doesn't let all that go to their head, to let them know that the real reason they have worth is because God comes among us. God lives and dies and rises again for us. And so Paul is seeking after that kind of righteousness, not the righteousness, not the good stuff that he can do, but what God has already done for him and then what God is going to do and will continue to do through him, just like God does with each of us. It's not about what all good stuff we can do. It's not about all the awards and accolades and greatness we can proclaim among ourselves. Because the only thing that really matters is this what happened on a cross 2,000 years ago. Not the really shiny, bright, embroidered things that go on our, you know, we hang around our necks or earrings or whatever. Not the elaborate things we paint and draw and put on our walls. But a thing of degradation, humiliation, pain, torture, suffering. That's what really matters. So when I think about the events of this week in this political time, this election time that we're in, what I really think about is that none of us are so important that, that we're standing out there by ourselves. None of us can say, well, here's, here's all my documentation, and so you should respect me highly. You should do this for me. You should do that for me. Paul's already said the same thing. I 
I encourage you to, if you're not registered to vote, to do so. I encourage you if you said, God, this is so painful. I ain't got a clue which of these people in this whole long list of ballots. I don't think I'll go. I don't think I'll vote. Please don't do that. I don't, I don't, I never felt good when I was in the, in the booth flipping the coin either. That's why I didn't toss it too wide. I didn't want anybody seeing it. Right? I, but we have to participate. We have to do our own investigation. We have to do our own research. We have to do our own prayer about how is it that God is talking to us about what we hear from people. How is it people are going to help the other, help the neighbor? How is it people are going to lead us with vision and integrity and strength? Your decision, my decision may not be the same. That's okay. Your faithfulness to the task, my faithfulness to the task, that's the important part. We can always find things we can disagree about. God help us, I hope we can find a few things that we can come close to agreeing about. Paul says that the thing we should agree about is God's righteousness, God's death and sacrifice, God's resurrection from the dead, God's claiming us, naming us as God's children, offering us grace. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Empower world leaders, especially those seeking political office, to be able to share their vision and message clearly and openly. Guide them to seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for hope. Equip Equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially Claudia, Joe, Kayla, Peggy, George, Angel, Christian, Anne, Faith, Hobart, Claudia, Jennifer, Phil and Joyce, Jory, Norma, Rebecca, Allie, Bob, Raymond and Mildred, Tom, Stephen, Burl, Angel, Randy, John, Carlisle, Nancy, Stephanie, Jim, Phyllis, Owen, Mickey, Marion, Charlotte, Daniel, Luke, Riley, President and Mrs. Trump, and other federal leaders, and all those who are struggling with the sickness or death of COVID-19, and those we bring to mind in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in our community who seek employment Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. With all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join as they respond, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered through the Holy Spirit, may we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the generosity of the Lord is good. Please come as you so desire to the table. Pick up the ramekin for uh, each member of your, of your, of your party. This song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown, that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for? My Lord should take frail flesh and die. He came from heaven's throne, salvation to bestow. Christ would know this is my friend my friend indeed this is my friend my friend indeed who at my need his life did spend sometimes they crowd his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, holds on us to their King. Then crucifying is all their bread. Then crucifying is all their breath. And for his death they thirst. rage and spite He made the lame to run and gave the blind their sight What injuries yet these are why What injuries yet these are why The Lord Most High so Dear Lord, done away A murderer they save The prince of life they slay Yet willingly he bears the shame Yet willingly he bears the shame That through his name all Stay and sing of him my soul adores. Never was love, dear king. Never 
ever was grief like yours This is my friend in whose sweet grace This is my friend in whose sweet grace I all my days would gladly spend The song is the hymn my song is love unknown it's in our hymnal and it was uh, it's been recorded in on that video and audio by fernando ortega ortega yeah if you get a chance to look it up and read it it's a beautiful text and he does a great job of singing it the body and blood of our lord and savior jesus christ broken shed and given for you Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. As you lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, named and claimed, and led into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all through hunger and thirst, guide us by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and lead us by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Amen. God.
that stuff in the elevator. Do these go upstairs? Three, two, one. Travis, gotta have. 